Hey there, Smoke Master D here. We are looking at my new Bell Fab smoker. Got the secondary rack over here. Um, I cooked in it. Uh, I think I'm going to do a video on that cook. See, I've got the uh, grill there in the firebox. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how I wanted to model this after the Workhorse Pits 1975. And how that didn't go so well, truthfully. Um, uh, those of you who know that smoker well will probably see this and know that there are many differences. Uh, we're going to start from this end. Uh, so Craig, uh, who does Belfab, uh, I talked about wanting the smoker to be like the 1975. I sent him some pictures and some measurements, but some of that didn't quite work out. I'm going to talk about maybe how that happened. Um, so here, on the back end, you see we've got the butterfly there. I do believe that the, uh, the butterfly damper is kind of lower and uh, this way instead of, so that way instead of up and down. Uh, but I like it well enough for what it is there. Um, one interesting difference is this ash, uh, you know, you can let the ash out here. In fact, I need to clean it out. Um, so, uh, something for getting ash. I think eventually I'm going to get a can down here. Um, I think a 10 gallon galvanized can in which to, to catch all the ashes. Um, so looking forward to that. Here we have uh, the pull-out grill. Did, did a few brats on that already. And then we have this. Uh, and this is a great. Now, one of the tines broke off over here, and I'm actually glad it did, because if it hadn't, I would not be able to get this thing out at all. It's very close, you see there. Uh, but in shipping, one of it broke off, uh, which was, I guess, a lucky accident. But yeah, you can see the ashes down there. Now, one of the things you may notice is that this is a 20-inch diameter firebox. Whereas in the Workhorse Pits 1975, it is 24, just like the main chamber. You may notice that... The mill scale actually has a 24 inch chamber like that and a 20 inch firebox. So if that profile seems similar to you or familiar to you, that may be where you see it. Uh, we have these lid catches here. Uh, they are, you know, very functional, not the fancy horseshoes that they have for workhorse pits. Um, so there's that. Now, the other really big difference on this end is the throat of the smoker. Uh, I sent a picture of what it should have looked like. Um, Craig asked me to, to do a different way and I was kind of nervous uh, at that point. Um, I had asked for this 27 inch firebox which I'm happy with. I like that extra few inches there uh, but Craig had to get it he didn't have one um, which surprised me because I just thought you know you cut cut off some of the pipe for the the firebox but apparently that's not how it's done um, so I was nervous uh, I probably should have pushed for having the damper the way that I liked but you can actually see it here and this is you know, a pull-out rack. I like the pull-out rack actually. Um, that is a fun thing. But that is the plate there. And I had originally been thinking, you know, maybe I'd put some holes in it. It's very close though to, to this grate. What the firebox or what the connection for the firebox should be, this is a model, is something very like this. So the overlap over there is 12 inches, but only six inches high, you have this. So there's actually 
six more inches that are just covered up we're in the top of the firebox is there and so there's a part that's covered with just metal flat and then there's this thing and of course the way that it works is you know uh, sort of have it down here it's pushing you know that hot air down and it's also going to have some hot air curling up around this side to get heat to the to the the part closest and then over here you know you're going to have the collector pulling the heat across uh, the chamber evenly and it's getting all those ratios right that is what the workhorse 75 has done you know they used computers to figure these things out which was the main reason i wanted to copy the 1975 uh but hasn't happened that way and part of me wants to be disappointed but another part of me likes to be optimistic kind of likes the challenge so I do think that I'm probably going to cut this plate off and I'm going to try to cut from this plate you know this I'm going to try to cut what I need to cover and create that six inches uh, down to top and then put this in there it's going to require some cutting and tack welding uh, I believe maybe some more than tack welding but that is my hope of uh, what I'd like to do so the other thing over here is that some of the dimensions for the smoke collector are off the, this smoke collector of course um, has that that bar there which I don't think is a big deal it's not something that's in the 1975 though they uh, actually have a video wherein they make a smoke collector for a um, uh, Yoder Wichita and that's in the tutorials uh, and when you see that you'll notice that the collector goes all the way over and that it goes below the grate so this collector is small in a few ways it should go a little bit farther down it should be you know five or six inches uh, down it should go all the way across and it should come around the pipe and the way they do it is they actually have the pipe sitting on the bottom and cut open like this but there's a passage behind it and this one there's like a little V section that's gonna the air is gonna hit on it and have to come back uh, but in the one for the workhorse pits this part is open and air can actually flow around the back I'm not entirely sure uh, if that is for better air circulation or, or how that helps actually now uh, so I've got my stack here the stack is also short uh, I think Craig did see that number of uh, I think it was 45 inches the thing about that is that the 45 inches was supposed to start at the top of the collector um, so this thing is actually short by about nine inches of the workhorse 1975 and uh, when we put it down oh, I've got the uh, so I've actually got this pin in here um, uh, and you know it's just a uh, nut bolt kind of deal there uh, screwed in so you can unscrew screw it in uh, let me undo it here so also I don't have the little ears on the damper for the stand which I'm not too uh, upset about that All right. so there we've got it down you can see there it doesn't really even go past um, this first part another interesting thing is that there's only one connector here so it's very kind of loose in the 1975 they have two two of these one here and one there and that gives their um, connection much more stability so it has to be really in the right place uh, so they have a little bit more workmanship in making it uh, very good to 
uh, you know, to come up and down um, in, a, in a more stable kind of way. So, yeah, I, I put on these uh, Tell True thermometers. The thermometers are telling me that I have about um, 25 to 50 degrees hotter on this side than this side. And that, of course, is because all that hot air is, you know, um, coming off of this plate and coming up, leaving a, a cooler area, especially right there. Um, I haven't done a biscuit test. I've thought about it. But with that great inequality, kind of know what it would look like probably. So, you know, uh, like I said, I'm going to do the plate there, hopefully in the near future. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Uh, let's see. Got my wood rack down there. Is there anything else I wanted to say? Oh, yeah. So... When I told Craig about the difference in the temperature, his thoughts were that that I should just close the damper down a good deal and close these dampers down a good deal and that would contain the heat and it would even out. I think it would work. I think that you could even out the temps some that way, but the, the way it's gonna work is it's gonna, the way that I'm thinking about it, it's gonna bottle up, you know, the hot air and kind of push it back into this corner that way and really slow down everything. And so instead of, you know, the convection that you wanna be happening, it's just gonna be not really that. It's almost going to be you know there's there's several smokers that sort of work that way um most of them are vertical smokers right like um, drum cookers bullet smokers uh, kamado smokers that have the ceramic right so really slow airflow um low smoke flow uh you know what you want from an offset is is for that air to be, you know, sort of blowing over the meat and, uh, you know, that sort of convection cooking uh, and, and, and going over it, kind of like a, a streamline, slip line. So that's what I want from, from my offset experience, and that's why, uh, you know, I am probably going to see about taking out this plate. So why was I, why was I nervous? Um, you know, so uh, it was, it was kind of harder for Craig to get this firebox. He had to get it separate. Um, I think that this whole fold down stack thing for him was a little difficult as well. Uh, and at one point he mentioned that, you know, if I didn't like something, he could or would uh, you know, sell it to somebody else because it was a really nice pit, uh, had a really good outline. It does, that's true. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, you know, the thing about the way Craig does his business is that it's no money up front, right? You get on a list, he builds it, then you pay him. So I, I'd spent all this time waiting for him to get to me. And he doesn't owe, he didn't owe me anything. He doesn't owe anybody anything until it's done. So it's, it's not like buying uh, from, from these websites when you pay and, uh, you know, it's, they owe you a smoker. It's, um, if he wants to, to build your smoker and then sell it to somebody else, he could, you know, theoretically. I don't think he does that. But like I said, it made me nervous. So that's just how that kind of went. And you know, it's uh, just how it could be. Yeah, that is a walkthrough. Uh, it's, it's maybe not the most glowing review, I know. Uh, and some of that is, is my fault. I just wanna say that I was not as clear in everything about what I wanted. Uh, I should have said that I wanted a 24 inch diameter uh, firebox. 
I should not have conceded on having this be that the way that it is. Um, and when I saw pictures of the collector, I should have have talked to Craig a little bit more about that. Um, I do think Craig didn't look at my notes quite as much as maybe he should have. Uh, but, you know, um, I think when I asked him to copy that kind of smoker, he, he was a little bit offended when I asked him to look at some videos. Weekend Warrior has a really great one on the 1975 and a walkthrough. Uh, you know, it's like he could do it. Uh, so, you know, I didn't want to offend him. For what I have here uh, in the pricing, I'll just say that the price that I paid for this smoker was 1900 minus the wheels. And, uh, uh, of course, the thermometers and uh, the finish didn't come with it. I think that he would have put on the paint for that price. So, um... I'm not entirely sure, but that, that was what I was thinking. But yeah, so, um, and then I think uh, terminal to terminal, I think I did about 355 in shipping to North Carolina. So really not bad altogether. Uh, hit my budget pretty well. But the one thing is I do feel like I'm going to have to do a little bit more work to get this smoker to perform the way that I want. So, uh, you know, uh, am I a cautionary tale? I don't know. Uh, you'll have to decide. Um, and if you do get a smoker from Craig, uh, he is a great guy, you know. Um, somebody who will work with you. And uh, if you take some of my notes on, on how this went, maybe uh, your smoker will come out even better than mine. Uh, but, you know, if I do 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 some modifications to this in the future. Maybe I'll show you all some of that too. All right, signing off. Uh, Smoke Master D.